Hi. Welcome to the lecture on Module 14, the Transport Layer. Uh, there are several different sections in uh, the Transport Layer, uh, so we'll see how many videos I pull together with this. So, the question is, why do you want to take this? Why would you want to study this module? Well, best basically, uh, this is the the part of the system where data is actually transported from one host to another. Uh, this is what really gets us started in transmitting data between the two, uh, at least theoretically. And it, it basically has two major protocols, TCP and UDP. Now, TCP is similar to you get a registered letter in the mail, so you've got to sign for it, stamp for it, a bunch of steps you've got to go through to, to approve the letter. UDP is probably close to F. Eh, you send it out and you hope it gets there. Um, so it'd be kind of like, yeah, it's a stamp letter, we're sending it, but I'm not overly concerned how fast it gets there. And so. So this, this chapter, this module goes into how to, what are the differences between those two. Uh, so, so what we'll talk about is, you know, the transportation of the data, TCP, UDP, uh, how do I, you know, deal with port numbers and port numbers. You remember, like, you've only got one IP address for your computer, right? But how many times are you just running one application. Right now I look at my screen here, I got one, two, three, four apps running at the same time on the internet. How does how does anybody know to send the right information? Well it's a combination between the IP address and the port number. And that combination creates a socket. And it's that bit of information that everybody knows how to get data between point A and point B. So we'll talk a little bit about the TCP, we'll talk about reliability and flow, and then talk uh, UDP. Uh, so how many modules this will turn into? I don't know. We'll see. So what's the role of the transport layer? The transport layer basically is what? It's just to generate data that must be exchanged between source and destination hosts. So all it's, re it's, all it's responsible for is making sure logical communication between the applications that are running on different hosts. And it could be temporary sessions between hosts, it could be uh, things that you're locking in place that you don't, you know, you want to make sure it happens. But the two main protocols that do this are TCP and UDP. Now, what are the individual responsibilities of the transport layer? Uh, one, it's tracking individual conversations. So each set of data flowing between the source app application and destination application, that conversation is tracked separately. And that's the purpose of, one of the major purposes of uh, the transport layer. Second one is segmenting a Got interrupted a little bit, but so the second part of the function of the transfer layer is segmenting the message. Because if I'm sending one piece to somebody, I'm not going to tie up the whole line while each information is is going through. So you basically take one piece and you break it into small segments, and then label it send it, and on the receiving end, you've got to reassemble War and Peace because not everything's going to get to you at the same time. So that smaller blocks are called segments. So just try to let you know. Third piece of information is add, in, add header information. And basically, you know, header information, pretty much like anything else, it's I got to say what port is it going to, 
I got to make sure that I have what segment number that I'm running that's in this packet information. The second one is identify an application. Because I've got to, there are multiple applications running, um, you've got to make sure that that transport layer identifies things correctly. And like I said earlier, it's you're attaching things to a, a applicate to a port. Now, when we get to a little bit further, you know, here's here's some some example of different port numbers. Certain key applications, uh, certain types of mail, HT, you know, web pages, internet chats. Uh, every of these major applications has a designated port number, but there are also a set of ports that are random because we don't always follow the information. We don't always lock everything into one of these information. So the ping has a port and things like that. So it, it's little things like that. And then what do I have to do is because I've got, like I said, I have four applications running at the same time, I've got to multiplex. I've got to interleave these different applications because I've only got one Ethernet port coming out of my my computer and I got to put all these on the internet on the on my Ethernet cable in some conversation. So I've got to interleave all these conversations to make sure that this happens. So I've got to I've got to segment my application. So segmenting allows me to have smaller packages, which allows me to then multitask or multiplex multiple conversations on the network at the same time. And if you hear the word segmentation, it just helps uh, facilitate the data transport by the lower uh, networks. Now, what are some of the transport layer protocols? Well, like I said earlier, there's two basic ones. There's TD, TCP and UDP. So you look at this layer here, those are the two major players that you need to worry about. Now you see this, this chart here shows TCP says it is used by what, FTP, HTTP, SMT, that's an email, and the DNS. But I'm also seeing that UDP is used by DNS and TFTP. So one of the things you're probably going to have to pay attention to is not only which protocol you're using, but which application uses which protocol. So this chart's going to help you a little bit. Uh, there's a whole lot more applications than this, but it gives you that brief picture as what's going on. So now let's look at TCP. Uh, now remember, IP, the Internet Protocol, is only concerned with the structure, the addressing, and the routing of packets from the original center to the final destination. IP is not responsible for guaranteeing the delivery or determining if the connection between the sender and receiver needs to be established. TCP is a, considered a reliable, full-featured transport uh, protocol. Uh, by that, it means it's I want to make sure that all the data that's being sent is delivered accurately and then handles that. Now, now remember, TCP divides data into segments. And so basically what it does, it, TCP also says, I don't want to worry about, because I'm concerned about the reliability of the data get from one point to the other, it's got to worry about reliability and flow control and it so it's got to number and track all the segments it's got to acknowledge that the, the data has been received it's got to retransmit anything that didn't get received uh, it, it's got to say what happens if the sequence comes in the wrong order and it's got to also says I want to send the data in at the most efficient rate possible that can be handled by the receiver so this TCP is trying to can manage all of this stuff to make sure that your message gets done effectively. I'll let you play the video. Now UDP on the other hand 
is a simpler transport layer. It's not as complicated as TCP. It, it doesn't worry about reliability, doesn't worry about matching flow control, which definitely means fewer header fields. It's got less data to track. Because the sender and receiver, you know, they, they don't manage the flow, it means the UDP datagrams or the data that's being sent can be processed a whole lot faster. So you'll see a lot more of your uh, video streaming stuff will all be UDP because I can't wait to see each frame to be acknowledged and accepted to, to make sure that happens. So UDP is called a connectionless protocol. And that's, it doesn't mean that it doesn't provide reliability or simple flow control, but it doesn't require an established connection. So it, it sends it out, really doesn't care how it gets there, so it doesn't track any information, and it's not received. So it, it just doesn't care as much. You know, it, it's, it does its best to deliver the package, but there's no acknowledgement that it was received correctly. Uh, so, like I said, it's like place that unregistered mail in the mail, and the sender doesn't know the letter's coming, and doesn't know when it'll get there. You don't know if it was received or not. So, that's kind of that similarity between uh, UDP. I'll let you play that video. Now then, the trick is, how do I choose the right protocol? How do I choose the one that I want to use? Now, some al al applications, the things that you're trying to do on the internet, can tolerate data loss. Uh, but maybe delays in transmission is unacceptable. So for those applications, UDP would be a better choice because it requires less network overhead and UDP is uh, for preferable for voice over IP, uh, also streaming video and things. Uh, UDP is also used by request and reply applications, where data is, is pretty minimal and you can retransmit things pretty quickly. So like the DNS, uh, because you want fast response time that you need a lot of overhead improving things, so you get a DNS runs UDP. Uh, so, it's things like that that you, you want to worry about when you're choosing. Now, if you have, if it's important that your data arrives correctly, accurately, in sequence, then you want to make sure you use TCP as the transport protocol. Uh, things like databases, web browsers, email clients, uh, that require data to get there in one piece and in sequence uh, becomes uh, important. Uh, so when you're developing an application, you need to choose which transport protocol you're going to use to you know, transmit data online. So if you're building a web page or if you're building a, a game, I mean, could you imagine if I had to, if you've got a a gun on, on your game and you're shooting at a target and you've got to make sure you, you just, your, then your developer chose TCP. So you pull the trigger and you've got to worry about did that bullet get received at the target? Oh, it didn't. Reject it. Kick back. Retransmit. Uh, let's handle the flow control on that. You're probably not going to do that. But just something to keep in mind. So you get like real-time video and voice usually use UDP, but can use both. Uh, so those are just things that when you're thinking about um, some of the choices you have is just remember UDP are used in things like voice over IP and domain DNS because it's fast, got low overhead, doesn't require any acknowledgement. It doesn't resend lost data packets. It delivers data as it gets there. So there's no no queuing of data, nothing. But TCP used for web servers and email servers and things because it's reliable. It acknowledges data. It makes sure that if something's missing, it wants to schedule a retransmission. So it requires things that have been done in a particular sequence. 
So as you develop in your application, you've got to decide which of these two protocols are you going to use. So with that, I think I'm going to end this video and we'll go on to a little bit more in-depth on TCP.